Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Mike Pence walked into FEMA and made a four-word promise that's sweeping the nation. Vice President Mike Pence spent the weekend with President Trump and his cabinet making plans to address Hurricane Irma and addressing other major governance concerns. On Sunday Pence visited the Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA, headquarters to get an understanding of the progress of the federal government's relief effort. Pence was caught by reporters at FEMA and said something that should give everyone faith in the Trump administration. Wherever Hurricane Irma goes, we'll be there first, with the resources and support to save lives and to help and recover. This is a very dangerous storm, life threatening, clearly. The briefing this morning caused the president to have great concern. The people of Florida need to know that our hearts and prayers and all of our efforts will be with them until this storm passes. Do we have some great people in the White House or what? This is an administration that is doing its utmost to protect American lives and mitigate all possible damage. For his part, President Trump has been monitoring the storm closely from Fort David and tweeting out words of support and evacuation advice to those in Irma's path. One tweet Saturday evening was particularly reassuring. Irma has made landfall and is making its way up the west coast of Florida and our president and his team has our back. Share it out so everyone can see. H.T. Fox News Mike Pence and his wife just walked out into field, then did something heartbreaking. On the 16th anniversary of 9-11, Vice President Mike Pence credited the heroes of Flight 93 with saving tons of lives and maybe even his own. He said that the heroes that died in that field led to a rededication to our most sacred ideal of freedom. They were ordinary people, he said, but on that day, they became extraordinary. Pence then delivered a speech at the Flight 93 National Memorial close to Shanksville, Somerset County. Look at the amazing thing he said. We are in the midst of a war between good and evil. The first battle in that war took place in the skies above us and ended in this grassy meadow, Pence said. Hundreds of people were sitting below him, including the family members of those on Flight 93. Pence called the passengers and crew on the flight men and women who looked evil squarely in the E and, without regard for their personal safety, rushed forward to save lives. They charged the cockpit and took hold of their fate. Pence then told the story of where he was on September 11th. It was the longest 12 minutes of my life, but it turned to 13 minutes, then 14. And then we were informed that the plane had gone down in a field in Pennsylvania, he said. So for me, it's personal. It's a debt I don't think I'll ever be able to repay. Because among the many lives that were saved by their selfless courage, they might well have saved my own life that day 16 years ago. Spread this everywhere. Mike Pence is right. We are in a fight against evil. Don't let the lying mainstream media ruin this day and make it about attacking our current president. We are America. We will never back down and we will never fade from the face of history. God bless all the heroes that perished on September 11th, share this if you will never forget this day 16 years ago. Charlie Rose asked Bannon if he's racist, watch Steve Bannon suddenly go insane on him. If you didn't see the Charlie Rose, Steve Bannon interview, then you need to watch it. Steve Bannon didn't take any crap and shed a lot of light on what has been happening in the White House. One of the greatest moments was one of the ones you are about to watch. Bannon began by telling Charlie Rose that he was raised in a desegregated neighborhood on the north side of Richmond, Virginia that was predominantly black. I went to an integrated school, a Catholic school. I served in the military, Bannon continued. I don't need to be lectured, by a bunch of limousine liberals, okay, from the Upper East Side of New York and from the Hamptons, about any of this. My lived experience is that. 
I don't need the affirmation of the mainstream media, Bannon said. I don't care what they say. They can call me an anti-Semite. They can call me racist. They call me nativist. You can call me anything you want. Okay? As long as we're driving this agenda for the working men and women of this country, I'm happy. Bannon then mentioned that the media is continuing to play the race card to try and make Trump seem like a racist. He even mentioned that the media has been the ones to give white supremacists a platform. Bannon has denounced ethno-nationalists and white supremacists multiple times and he did so again in the interview. It is very sad that the mainstream media has given white supremacists such a huge platform in order to try and take down the president. They are disgusting, spineless and fake journalists. Share this if you don't think Trump is a racist and think it is absolutely disgusting what has happened to journalism. Thanks for reading. Let's keep on fighting, patriots. We cannot let up. He did it Mexico just did something incredible for Donald Trump that nobody saw coming. While the media was busy panicking over the weekend about a mixture of the awful hurricane in Florida and Trump's big negotiation with the Democrats, everyone missed the amazing thing he did with Mexico. If you believe the mainstream media, y'all may think that Mexico hates Trump so much they may build a wall to keep him out. Not true at all. According to a new interview with Mexican Ambassador Geronimo Gutierrez, Trump has been working behind the scenes with great results. In an interview yesterday with The Hill, Gutierrez revealed that Mexico is actually starting to get closer to the U.S. with Trump in charge than when it was all media clutter against him. My own view is that we're in a better shape now than when we started early this year. Gutierrez. Now, that is not to say that President Donald Trump and President Nieto are going to be watching football together on the weekends, but it turns out they do see eye to eye on some major issues. It's no secret that we have had our share of difference with the Trump administration. Those differences are public, they're known. What both sides have strived for is to find common ground within those differences. One of the positive things about what has been built over the past six to eight months is the fact that both sides believe the other guy is honestly trying to reach a deal on different aspects of the relationship. Now combine this report with the fact that Trump is busy renegotiating NAFTA right now, and it looks like a sign of good things to come. This is the kind of stuff the MSM wants to bury and that's why it's vital that y'all get this shared out to every conservative you know. Horror show last night Miss America did something unforgivable to President Trump. Last night the liberal elites managed to destroy another great American institution in their ridiculous fight against President Donald Trump. Apparently the Avengers, Star Trek, and half of the TV shows were not enough. Now they came for Miss America. The setup was a classic one. You had the swimsuit competition, the talent competition, and the question and answer part. That's where it got tricky. Instead of asking questions about the girls, it seemed like every question was all about Trump. I mean, come on you all. The winner of the show was the girl who was asked if Trump should have left the Paris Climate Accords, which she said no, and another girl was asked if Confederate statues should be torn down. Not only that, but one of the other girls was straight up asked if Trump colluded with Russia. I'm sorry, you all, but that's just ridiculous. Unless the girl they asked that to was a U.S. or Russian intelligence agent, she has no possible insight to offer into a collusion scandal. So this is what it has come to. Fine, if they will not treat us on the right like people, we do not need them. We can make our own pageants, movies, and TV shows. Isn't it high time we take these alight tests down the American, capitalist way? Final Justice Jeff Sessions has a special surprise for all leakers that will put them in jail. A few months ago President Donald Trump made it very clear to Attorney General Jeff Sessions that if he did not work to find the leakers, he was out. Well, 
fast forward to yesterday and AG Sessions is delivering on his promise big league. It has now been reported that Sessions is gearing up to run lie detector tests on every member of the National Security Council to find the leakers. Yes, even McMaster himself. The straw that finally broke the camel's back was when full transcripts of calls between President Trump foreign leaders were leaked to the public. Of course, at this point, the lie detectors have not yet been ordered and this is all hearsay from sources by famously unreliable liberal paper Axios, the brainchild of Politico. Until AG Sessions makes a move, this is just a rumor. However, despite me normally hating rumor starting news like this, there may actually be a solid idea here. Frankly, the NSC should not mind taking the test if they have nothing to hide. At the same time, Sessions must also consider that many people on the NSC have worked in military intelligence, so they may have been trained to pass a lie detector. War ready Steve Bannon just said five shocking words that'll has Congress freaking out. When Steve Bannon left the White House, he claimed he was going to war for Trump against his opponents. Now we know exactly who he was talking about. During an interview with CBS 60 Minutes, Bannon claimed that establishment Republicans are not going to help you unless they're put on notice. What Bannon said next should give them all cause for concern. They're going to be held accountable, he stated, if they do not support the President of the United States. Charlie Rose then asked for clarification. You're going to war with them? Absolutely, Bannon answered. Considering Bannon was the architect of the campaign that sent the ultimate outsider to the Oval Office, Congress shouldn't take this threat lightly. Bannon has already proven himself immensely capable when it comes to taking down the establishment. If they cross the president and his agenda, he might have to do it again. Watch Bannon accuse the establishment of trying to nullify the 2016 election in the video below. Share if you support Bannon's decision to put Congress on notice. We need to drain the swamp and get these fake renos out of there.